Okay. Right. Um, I guess it's me. Is it me out next, Richard? Yep. Okay. So I've uh, I shared my screen. I don't know if everybody can see that. Looking good. Coming through. Okay. So um, this is a, a project I did a few months ago. Um, uh, and it's really just a case project for a, a raspberry pie. As you can see, it's rather large uh, as a kettle. So um, what was what was the point of that? Uh, well, I didn't want to throw it away. Um, I also thought it was rather uh, reminiscent uh, 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 one of those. Uh, and there's some guys uh, got 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 a couple of these uh, uh, hanging around our lab on news. So uh, I thought it would amuse me to uh, uh, go for something a little bit uh, more down market. Okay, um, so um, what's it got in it? If I can just get back to my notes. Um, okay, it's got some. Uh, it's got some lighting, which is uh, provided by uh, some Neo pixels. Uh, which are driven from uh, a raspberry, the Raspberry Pi, which is uh, inside the uh, the main water chamber. There, I was able to cut out some uh, some some socket holes uh, with a Dremel in the in the side of the of the case. There, I've got a USB, I've got a network cable, and around the other side, there's an HDMI. Um, and you can buy these short cables that are a socket on uh, one end, and then a plug. Uh, on the other end that goes into the Raspberry Pi inside. Um, it's, uh, it's powered uh, from a, a normal Raspberry Pi type um, a USB power supply and that the power actually comes in on the, uh, on the mains cable uh, and into the base of the kettle. Um, now Normally with these kettles, you'd expect them to uh, come apart, but uh, I had to screw the base on because the five volts uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't sufficient to uh, really overcome the, the contact resistances of the usual kettle power pass through. Uh, so there are some little cables uh, running up inside. I'll show you those uh, later. Um, so yeah, so um, that's what it looks like on the outside. I'll get it, uh, get something running here, uh, and I'll show you some photos uh, of uh, the uh, the construction and the insides. Okay, so um, I just have to run a little uh, script here. All right, so it's, um, it's uh, set up. Okay, let's see if that, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so while I was testing this all out, uh, I uh, ran, did this little GUI uh, to check how things are going on. And um, one of its functions is if you press the switch, it advances the pictures. Um, so that's what's actually inside the, uh, just stuffed inside the boiling, uh, the boiling chamber. There's a pie and a little circuit board that's got some, uh, a few couple more Neo pixels on it, uh, and a level converter to, uh, to drive the Neo, to drive the Neo pixels. Is that going to change? There you go. Yeah. The pictures are slow to change because they're being uh, read off the Pi's internal card. So there's a, a little breadboard. Um, the IC there is a level shifter for the Pi's 3.3 volt logic to the 5 volt logic that drives the uh, drives the Neo pixels. Uh, and they're, they're these two Neo pixels here did provide the internal lighting. Uh, this bit over here is a voltage uh, divider, 
uh, through which, which the uh, switch on the kettle uh, uses to pull up and pull down one of the input pins on the on the pie. Right, press, press the switch. There'll be a short pause. Uh, perhaps he's not going to. Perhaps he didn't read that one. <sighs> Kettle switch is pressed. There we go. Okay. Uh, the inside of the kettle. Um, have a little look. What else have we got here? Okay. Um, this. Uh, these two ports here are, in, uh, are to the water level indicator on the outside, uh, which was um, uh, handy for passing uh, some wires through to the uh, NeoPixel strip in the water level gauge there. Uh -huh. Pressed. Uh, yeah, um, too many views of the same thing. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, this is inside the base of the kettle. You can get the base uh, off, uh, and this is where the mains cable comes in. And you see I've had to solder on some extra cables, and they just go up through a hole uh, into the base of the kettle because the feed-through uh, wouldn't work. Okay, yeah, it just shows that. Uh, again, this so this is on the bottom. This bit up here is the bottom of the kettle. I've just soldered the wires on. Okay, okay. This is this is uh, in the uh, at the bottom of the the kettle itself. Um, what you can see here, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this is the. Um, bimetal disc that turns the kettle uh, the kettle off um, and uh, this there is a, there is a, some contacts here which are moved by the external uh, switch so those are all uh, wired up to um, uh, give you a logic level on one of the input pins of the Pi okay now um, I didn't actually know how those um, bimetal discs were, were were activated to, and uh, what actually happens is uh, there's a pipe up the inside of the kettle uh, where steam comes down uh, and, and then comes into contact with that bimetal disc and pops it over. So that made uh, so I didn't actually have to drill any holes in the bottom of the kettle to get the wiring uh, into it. I just passed them up the steam pipe, um, which leads up to the top of the kettle, and you can. Uh, uh, get the wires then down to the pie inside from there. Okay, there you go. Uh, spot the difference, it says. So one of those is plugged into the mains uh, and one of these is plugged into uh, uh, a USB socket. Um, fortunately, uh, with it all wired together, it's rather difficult to uh, put the wrong one on the wrong base, but uh, uh, be careful. Okay. Um, the interface, the, the little GUI thing here I've written is in is using a, a, a library, a very simple library called um, GUI Zero. Um, and I've done a little uh, paint program so like this, so you can actually uh, draw. Is that gonna, there you go. Oh dear, I think the camera, I think the camera on the Pi has frozen, which is a bit of a, uh, yeah, that's that camera has stopped. Sorry, I'll get it going again. Media capture. Uh, uh, which one is it? It's, it's renumbered the ball. That's handy. Let's try this one. Okay, there you go. Make that a bit bigger. 
Okay, uh, it's a little bit too bright for the camera in the dark. So anyway, this is a bit like the sort of the paint program. Um, you can click on the palette and select your colours, and you can actually paint in uh, what patterns you like uh, on the uh, on the LEDs on the outside. Okay, right. So I think that's uh, about it for the pictures. So I'm just going to go around again. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, What's it? Uh, I've got lots of software that I've done with this. Um, so, we'll see. LS, uh, uh, yeah, I'll just kill that interface. Okay, so um, you've seen the little paint program. Um, in the README here, uh, there are some command line things that you can do. Um, so, oh, okay, so the way the software components uh, are connected in this is by using uh, Linux pipes. So if we have a, a look at what's in the directory here, we've got uh, uh, two named pipes set up already. One's called color codes and the other one's called color names. Um, and the, uh, the readme here shows how they're all connected together. So um, you can take any kind of uh, program that writes to the uh, uh, terminal and uh, stick uh, uh, the output of your terminal program into the color codes pipe. And then um, that's, uh, uh, and then I've got a couple of, I've got a Python script that's bound to the output of that pipe, which turns the, uh, the complicated uh, terminal codes into just sort of English words for the colors. Uh, and that stuffs it into another pipe. And then I've got another. Um, uh, Python script that takes the actual color names and uh, um, uh, and displays them. So actually, I'm going to restart that demo I had before because I think that sets up everything. Uh, set, uh, that sets up this whole chain and connects the um, uh, connects the the running Python scripts uh, to uh, to the pipe to the uh, to the pipes. So. Uh, <laughs> Set up lights. Okay, so you can it'll redraw the GUI, but you can ignore that for the moment. Okay. Uh, so we've got a couple of uh, example uh, okay, yeah, so if you do uh, this one here. And just list the directory. Uh, there we are. Um, it's you can see there. We've got a couple of blue lines and a couple of orange lines, and those colours have come up on the outside of the outside of the kettle. So if you um, uh, run your terminal, something like script or something like that, uh, the Pi will echo on the outside uh, what's actually happening, reflecting what's happening on the on the terminal window. So I had a, um, yeah, I've got a script here that's going to set off some compiling. Um, which, and hopefully you'll see that as it works through, uh, the display will on the outside of the kettle will change. Okay, let's see that again. There we are. Unfortunately, that's turned out to be a bit bright, hasn't it, on there? But uh, there you go, as each line pops up. Uh, the, the pixels advance up the outside of the kettle. Okay. 
Okay. Fine. Um, okay. Um, the software I've got on here, um, I actually built uh, several ways of uh, uh, of running the uh, of running the lighting. Um, the um, there's actually a, an abstract class and an abstraction of the of the lighting system uh, in a class called lights.py. Uh, uh, then I built around that. There's a module uh, in in the standard parts of uh, of Python called CMD which allows you to build a command line interface. Um, I won't demo that now, but it's got, it's got uh, uh, you just sort of uh, say turn on light uh, and that, a name set of lights and it will turn those, uh, turn those on, uh, which uses the, uh, the, the class for the lights. Um, and, um, uh, and what you do with this command line uh, interface is, uh, is you uh, use your your color names uh, pipe, you feed that into there. Um, uh, uh, and then it controls the client, the, uh, the class that uh, abstracts the lights. Okay. Um, so I've got just a few minutes left. Uh, I've got uh, as well, I've got some uh, demos of some, uh, some nice lighting uh, effects. Um, and if I can remember what the name of how, how to run those, uh, I'll do it in a moment. Yeah, so uh, I think what I have to do is kill, uh, okay, let's kill the current demo. You need the sudo um, because the library uh, for driving the uh, the Neo pixels from Adafruit um, uh, requires that uh, sufficient permissions. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, whoopsie. Okay, so there's a bit of a, that's actually a filler gauge there. Maybe if I turn it slightly around to the side, might be able to. So there's a filler gauge going up and down uh, there. Okay, that's a little pulse going up and down. That's uh, the brightness on that one's a Gaussian, I think. Uh, which worked but, uh, a lot better than a sine wave. We'll do that for a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and that's a that's a sine wave moving up it. Okay, right, so, oopsie. Okay, um, anything else to tell you about this? Um, I was rather tempted, well, haven't I done yet? I was rather tempted to fill it full of, uh, full of mineral oil coolant um but that uh you know uh, carry on the kettle thing uh but uh, that was going to prove very messy so i didn't uh, bother with that um i quite like to be able to make the lid of the kettle pop open um it's just got a little sprung uh sprung latch that holds it in place um i haven't got any real ideas about how though i could get it to uh, to pop up so if anybody's got any suggestions on that that would be great Okay, so um, that's about me allotted time. Uh, has anyone got any questions? Uh, mm -hmm. 
Hi, James. Yeah, thanks for that. I think that's pretty cool. The, I think the real question is, how many times has the wrong kettle been picked up and filled with water? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, uh, it's surprising. I don't usually keep it in the kitchen. Ah, uh, well, there and, you go. Then. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, based, it's based really to go into my office to uh, embarrass my colleagues who bought, uh, uh, who bought fancy Mac servers and don't use them. <laughs> Uh, 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 the only idea, uh, which I think I'm sure everybody else has thought of, is for your kettle pop up, just use a simple servo motor. They're quite like yeah. a, a, an SG90, they're cheap as chips. They've right, got a yeah. reasonable amount of torque. I'm sure you could engineer something pretty simple to be able to pop, you know, pull that yeah. button and, and simulate that pressing. I yeah. think quite cool. You could almost have a second one that would actually close it. Because yeah. I think that you know, yeah. just popping it up would, would be yeah. good, but then actually getting it to self-close could be even better. Yeah. But no, cool. Like it. So <laughs> a, a very interesting use of a duff kettle. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you could, you could actually get it so that you replace the uh, cut a hole in the glass and put a decent speaker in there. You'd also make it an internet radio. Oh yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, that might. Because you've got a nice space for a speaker there. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, there, there, is, there is more room inside the in water chamber, certainly. Yeah. I tell you what, I've just thought of one of those yeah. little pizza. Um, you could, you know, that generates like little. It, it sort of generates steam, but it isn't steam. You know, it's cool water. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you, exactly. could, you could do that and actually put a little yeah, bit yeah. of that in the spout and yeah. actually make it simulate I, I, like I, I, it's if boiling. You, <laughs> if you look at um, Sebley's duck gun, which he did as a big project a while back, what he uses are vapes, little vape engines you get from the things. You mount it from an electronic cigarette. And then you just generate smoke, the vapor off that, for a very simple switch. Because he uses it on this gun, and you, when you fire it, it squirts a bit of smoke out in front of it, and then fires right. a laser. So you can see the laser when you shoot it. <laughs> and, uh, you could wire it up to the temperature gauge as well, couldn't you? So as the as the pie gets more use, and it raises yeah, the temperature, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you get a yeah. visual warning that it's it's under stress. <laughs> I think it was the temperature gauge that actually went on it, which is why it went and broke, uh, which is why, <laughs> um, which is why I ended up with a new kettle. You can convert it to a complete allegory, which is that it detects if anybody's in the room, or it detects if nobody's in the room, and then it goes through a, a boiling simulation. And if somebody's <laughs> in the room, it doesn't boil. Hmm. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, I'm sure that's just right. Physics lab uh, does the uh, does the observed kettle boil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So there you go. Uh, so there you are. Well, uh, I didn't have time to show you all the all the software. It's quite a lot of it. Um, but at some point, I'll uh, I'll post it up on me. Uh, on the GitHub, uh, and anybody who's interested can see how it, uh, can see how it works. Uh, but I quite, I mean, I hadn't used uh, name pipes or anything uh, before, but that seemed to be quite easy. There was just one slight ca catch uh, in opening the pipe for read on in Python, is if you didn't have anything in it, uh, it caused an error. So I had to put a little uh, bash script around the outside to start feeding the pipe with some dummy stuff before starting the Python. Yeah, I'm sure there are more elegant, there's probably more elegant ways of doing it, but I uh, haven't found out the intended way as yet. Names pipes are very powerful. Way, way back in time, I wrote a chat system, which basically, when you logged into the system, it opened a name pipe that was your name. And anybody who wanted to send you a message just wrote to the name. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, I imagine. If you set this up, you could uh, probably set it up so somebody could SCP in it and just uh, you know copy some text files into the into the pipes and. Uh, well, um, do, you, do you have this? Do you have Sorry. I, the, I, I was sort of saying in the chat. Do you have it set up so you've got, got a webhook so you can just ping it uh, across the web 
to set uh, particular lights because it would be really cool to do it for continue, the continuous integration thing. Um, so yeah, I'm sure. I mean, get, yeah, yeah, and continue that you, you could uh, set up all sorts of software interfaces. So you could SCP yeah. into it. You could uh, you could probably set up a web server with a RESTful uh, API. As I've got a nice uh, class representation there for it, that would be um, quite yeah. straightforward. It'd be fun to do something like GitHub Actions. Sorry, yeah, that goes up. Yeah, because then then it's got little hooks to ping out and call a webhook when it gets to different parts of the yeah. deployment. You could just say, mm -hmm. "Go do it," and go in the kitchen and watch the kettle tick through all the phases. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose there's got some internet nostalgia, isn't it? Uh, uh, perhaps it should also in the uh, you know the, the internet coffee pot. Uh, <laughs> It did actually, the, the webcam you were looking pointed at it was plugged into the Pi. So it was, uh, it was looking at itself there. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks very much for that. Okay, cheers. Anyone else, anyone else have anything they want to share? Or we, uh... So we're going to have another one in a couple of weeks. So if anyone has anything, anything they want to present, let me know. Facebook, Twitter, whatever. <laughs>